Hello friends, welcome to my channel Go Digit. Today, in this video, we will learn about an another way of uh, creating an app in the Power App Portal for the Business Central. So, uh, if you guys have not uh, watched my last week video, I just like to tell you that uh, please watch that video first because uh, I have started this series of uh, learning Power App with respect to the Business Central and. Uh, last time we have created one sample app for the customer list where we have shown how to create an app for where we can see the customer list of the business central we can create the new customer as well from the power app this time uh, we will extend our learning further and uh, try to use two apis uh, from the business central in the power app to see the available customer orders uh, in the business central for each customer right so this is i already made a video uh, sorry i already make a make this app so first uh, we i will show you the demo of this app then we will create this app from the scratch right so let me click on the run app run button and this is my welcome screen right so here you can see that uh, first i have this number so i have this drop down available from where i can select any available customer number so for example, if I select this uh, customer number 20,000, automatically the names gets pop up here, right? The name is trade research of the customer and you can see that there are currently zero orders and there is no orders available here. That means no active sales order is available for this customer number in the business central. If I select, let's say 30,000, I can see that total orders are one and this is the detail of that particular order order number is this and this is the amount if I select this I can see the further details of my order right and I can go back as well and same like if I select the 10,000 it will show me the count of the total orders of the 10,000 customer which is the name of Aritum corporation this is the total orders and this is the list of that orders right and we can see the details of it by clicking on this button right so let's see how we can uh, develop uh, this app in the power app we are using the two apis first uh, one this is from the customer api and this is from the uh, sales order api right so without wasting any time let's uh, go back and create a new app okay so what we can do why it is not going back leave leave page okay so we are here in the home screen let's click on create button blank app blank canvas this time we will create an app for the phone so let's name it uh, customer bc customers okay so let's click on create and click on skip this time I'll let me rename this to home and now the first thing is I'll add one rectangle and uh, what I can do here is I'll change this to and then I'll add one label as well and name it customer orders list right so I did nothing just uh, I added one rectangle and one text box uh, one label to add the name of that particular list right we can we can change the color of this text to let's say white okay so like this uh, now what we can do is that let's add one label and name it number
and let me copy this and paste this to name uh, to give this a uh, name of the customer this is the label of uh, second text uh, label and now let's add the drop down so there is a tool called drop down select that control and now we can We can use this here right and if I just drop it further and here like this now second thing is let me add one text input as well where we will show the name of the customer automatically based on the selection of the customer number in the drop down menu right so select that drop down menu and here in this items property we have to select the connector connector is the business central okay and then we have to select the environment first and then our data set so this is my environment q environment i'm selecting and then the table and for this the table will be the customer right because we want the customer number should uh, show shown when we click on this drop down menu right so let's select the customers this is the one click on connect and uh, i think yeah okay so after you select this api now in this value part we have to select the field for which uh, you want the lookup should work because i want the number so i'm selecting the number in case you want uh, the the name should come up so you can select the name here and then automatically the names will come up here right so if i show you the by running this app you can see that now the number customer numbers are coming up automatically right so just have to play with the two properties and rest of the thing system will do automatically now what i want is that based on the selection here the name should come up automatically in this input right so to do that uh, we have to in this default property what we have to do is uh, we have to type this the name of the control of drop down which is drop down one dot selected like whatever record is selected in the drop down control on of that selected record what i want is the name so display name is the field of the customer api which is already there i'm just calling it i'm just calling that field in that control of text input on the basis of the selection of the customer number on the drop down control right so select this and that's it so as soon as you write this formula drop down one is the name of my drop down control then the selected which is the like whatever record is selected and then the name of the field which you want to show here based on the selection of uh, the value in the drop down right so now if i show you by running this app so currently the 80000 uh, customer number has the name test user if i select the 10000 then the name editum corporation is coming up 20000 30000 and so on right so this is how we can make the use of this drop down and the name to show up the respective things okay now the another thing is that uh, we want uh, the total orders uh, kind of thing should come up that how many sales orders in the count basis uh, are there so let me add one label and name it uh, total orders extend it further and then i'll copy this again and paste it here this time in this text i want something from uh, the sales order api right now i don't want any text here so i'm just remo removing that thing now what i want is i want the list of the sales orders here so i can go to the insert and select the vertical gallery and now we just have to align this okay like this 
and I can change the layout because I don't want any image or something, but I want uh, kind of this. So I select this title, subtitle and body. Based on the selection now, the second thing is I want the data source. So to select the data source again, select the connectors, select your business central connector. And this time uh, we will select the table called sales order. Right, so once the list comes up, I will type the name of that API, which I want to use. So yeah, sales, sales orders, right? So I want this, select this and click on connect. Okay, so things are coming up here. And you can see that by default, this number and some address is coming up. In case you want to change it, you can click on edit fields. And now you can see that what value you want in the three sections of this control. Like we have three sections called title, subtitle and body. So currently we have this uh, title, the number field of the sales order in the title control. In the subtitle, let's say you want something else uh, so uh, what i can do i can select the customer name or you can select the status whatever the, the thing is or uh, in this uh, the body what i can do i can select the amount of the sales order like this total amount uh, excluding tax okay so that's how now if you just go back you can see the sales order number is coming up, the name of the customer is coming up, the amount is coming up, right? Automatically everything is coming up. I have not done anything, right? So uh, this is a thing which is uh, we have to do. But uh, if I run this, you can see that currently uh, the record is 30,000 is selected here, but uh, all the orders are coming up like for Editum Corporation, for uh, school of fine art for other customers like it's not like based on the selection of the customer number here i want only those orders should come up here right so we have to make a link between these two apis okay so how to do that uh, what we have to do select this control and in this items only what we have to do we have to write down a function called filter this is the function called filter and we have to use that and it takes two parameters. First parameter is the source and the second parameter is the logical test. So the source means that from where you want the records to be filtered. Okay, so I know that I want the records to be filtered from my API called sales orders, right? Because I want to show the orders here. So that's why I selected this source. Now the second parameter is a logical test. Logical test means is the condition on the basis, uh, the two APIs you will link together. Right, so I know the common factor between these two APIs is the customer number or the customer name, right? So I have to link the customer number or the name from this to this, from the customer API to the sales order API. So to do that, there is a function called uh, like text, which will uh, take a value like from, uh, you can say the customer like the fields uh, names are coming up here from the sales order thing. I can select this thing like customer name. I can select from the sales order API equals to because it's a logical test. So I'm uh, I'm adding the conditions here. So that again, I have to use the text function. And this time I have to uh, select the name from the customer control like from the from this drop down control so i can type here drop down control dot selected whatever record is selected there the name of that okay and then close the bracket to complete this filter function now you can see that the order of only 30000 customer is up showing up here because I make a linking based on the customer name. So whatever customer name is there in the sales order, I am checking the name of the selected customer number in my drop down control, right? So this is the function we have to write. And on the basis of that linking automatically happens, right? Don't worry about this. It's just a normal warning that uh, 
if you place a cursor here you can see that delegation warning is there where the text part of this formula might not work correctly on large data sets so maybe if you have a so much large data sets but then it might not work but it's not like that it will not work for okay so that's the thing now uh, i know uh, like if i run this currently 30000 is there so 30000 record is showing up if i select 20000 then it will filter out the 20000 there is no record here then the 10000 the 10000 data is showing up here like this but that count of total orders is still not coming so to do that go to that label again and in this text property i can use the control name of this which is the gallery one so i can type here gallery one because the records are available in the gallery one control so you just type the name of the gallery one control and use this function called all items count so it will sum up the count of all the records which are showing up uh, sorry which is showing up in this gallery control like this so currently seven is showing up automatically because the seven records are there if i select the thirty thousand, then it will change it to one because only one record is showing up here right so this is an easy way through which you can show the count also based on the uh, number of records are showing up in the gallery control right so this thing is already done now now what we have to do we have to make a second screen as well so click on the new screen blank screen and this is we will name it as detail okay and what i want is here that i want a display form so just select the display form and uh, let's change it like this and select the data source from the sales orders only i want the data fields are showing up but the not the values are showing up and we know we have learned this in the last video to how to connect this page with the first page and show the selected records data so for that i have to go back again and select the property called item and here i have to type gallery one dot selected okay and now the data comes up automatically one thing i can do is uh, i can select the icon to go back arrow left and in this i can write down the code called back with that some nice animation so this is done now and i can go back to the home screen again and in this control what i can do because as i want when user click on this it will open the detail screen so i can type here the function called navigate navigate to the detail screen with the some nice effect right so now let's run this app we are in this 30000 school of fine art is a name total orders are one and if i want to see the details i can click on this button it will show me the details of that order and if i want to go back i can go back again i want to select the 10000 the names comes up automatically the right now the total orders are showing up with the seven number and the total seven orders are there if i want to go back uh, go to this record i can select this and it is showing me that particular order i can go back again so this is the way an easy way to play with the power apps to make some nice power apps uh, for your business central uh, and i think uh, you should st start exploring the power app more because uh, it's completely magical and you can do really wonders uh, and you can make some nice intuitive user interfaces for your customers uh, to use uh, the to give them the nice experience of the business central plus uh, the power apps right so that's all in this today's video next part uh, in the next week we will learn something more inside in the power apps till then uh, if you like this video please hit the like button and please subscribe to my channel thank you so much for watching this video